Hey guys, and welcome to another Let's Replay. My god, it's been a while, hasn't it, since we stepped into Resident Evil Revelations, uh, the original game. Now, <laughs> if my um, old save is to be believed, we last played this in 2013. So, yeah, that, that, that's a thing. That's, I was like, oh, well, that's seven years ago. No. No, 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 no. That's nine years ago. Nine. Nearly a decade. Nearly a decade since I've played this. Um, I'm here to answer the question, is this game still good? Well, well, well. Let's find out together, shall we? I've played a little bit of this off camera just to get a feel for the old girl and um <laughs> Yeah, this game's got a got a little bit of crust on it, hasn't it? Um especially when it comes to the controls. They they do not um they do not handle well at all. But, you know, the game itself I think is still pretty fun to play. Um, so I've played a little bit of this. Apparently it took us like seven hours to get through the game. Uh, so this game is reasonably short. Uh, we're not going to be touching raid mode or anything like that again. Because like I've I've done raid mode. You know, it's done. It's, it's a shut case as far as I'm concerned. But what we're interested in is the campaign. I want to answer the question. Because I remember when this game first came out. I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, a friend of mine, Jimmy, has just done this game. Well, I wouldn't say he's just done this game. Uh, the chap did it a little while ago now, but he did it on um, Infernal mode. And <laughs> they did a pretty bloody good job of it. Uh, I haven't seen it all, but from uh, what I watched, it was a pretty fun time. Uh, so, you know, we're going to go New Game Plus because we get to carry over all of our stuff. And after being very, um, very inspired from watching them play, why not? Let's go Inferno. Uh, or is it Inferno? Infernal? I can't remember. Uh, Infernal, apparently. It says it right there. So we're going to go Infernal. I'm pretty sure some Resident Evil games, they call it in Infernal. Uh, on some Resident Evil games, they call it Inferno. They change up the the names of the difficulties. Pretty much every other Resident Evil game, which is actually really annoying. I don't know why they do that. Do you know what I like about Halo? Uh, on Halo, you have easy, normal, uh, heroic, and legendary. Right? Every single game, easy, normal, heroic, and legendary. So you know what you you know what you're expecting. But with this, who knows what you're getting? Um, with Resident Evil. Now, one thing I did observe coming back to this is the art style for this game is kind of all over the place. And what do I mean by that? Well, I mean the characters. You have um, some very realistic looking characters for the time, of course. Uh, Jill, for instance. O'Brien. Um, and Parker. And then you just have some straight up like anime cartoon characters thrown in as well uh, like Morgan the the head of the FBC uh, and the apprentice I forget his name can we find out what his name is so if we say no can we find out what his name is can we like I don't know ah select outfit this should probably tell us this will tell us so yes Jill Jill looks weird in this game I remember being quite fond of her visual design and it's not bad it's really not bad. It's just bizarre. I was thinking about going for the silly um, costumes because personally, I quite like that costume. But it's a visual mess when you're trying to play. Uh, unfortunately, the other costumes they have kind of... I mean, it's cool. Don't get me wrong. You know, there's nothing wrong with these costumes. But they're just they're not that exciting. Uh, then we have Chris, of course. Chris looks pretty good in this game, actually. Uh, you know. In fact, he kind of looks straight out of Resident Evil 5 slash 6 there. And then, of course, we have him in his very controversial... 
um, outfit there that I remember people went mental about. Uh, about, you know, oh, you're making Chris look gay, blah, 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 blah. Seriously, who cares? It's a funny outfit. Enjoy it. Um, and because everyone moans so much, I think we're going to keep that on. And then we have Parker. Parker doesn't really have any, like, decent outfits. I, I guess there's one here that apparently I still haven't unlocked. Now, according to Steam, I have over 105 hours on this game. <laughs> wow, that's pretty mad. Oh, Keith. I remember Keith. Yes. Okay, that's cool. We're going to keep that on. Uh, Jessica. Ugh, God, I hate Jessica. This, this game also has some awful characters. Some truly awful characters. And we've got Quint as well. Yeah, Quint. Quint and Keith were like the comic relief. Uh, I remember kind of enjoying them back in the day. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, I guess we'll see. We'll we'll see if they still hold up. I want to know what that guy's called. If I go to like solo play characters, this is going to show us all of the characters, isn't it? So we have Jill. We have Chris Parker. Jessica. Ah, Raymond. Yeah, I mean, he just looks just stupid. He literally looks like a cartoon. There he is. Yeah. Morgan Lansdale, who literally looks like some evil goblin science gnome. But, uh, hey, there we go, I suppose. Jack Norman. Yeah, so we'll be seeing a bit of him a bit later. And, of course, Rachel. Now, we shouldn't be too hard on Rachel, bless her. She couldn't afford a suit that fits. You know, I'm guessing these guys... Oh, and Lady Hunk as well, which is actually quite cool. Um, not that she's in the actual campaign, of course, but, you know. Uh, anyway. So, with enough rambling and enough waffling, let's go into Infernal. Uh, now, I'm expecting this to be pretty bloody hard. Uh, no shit, right? Um, so I don't know how I'm going to upload this game. I don't know if we're going to do a few episodes here, a few episodes there. It all depends how long it takes me to get through it. Uh, I don't have masses of recording time available to me. However, in a few weeks, at the time of this recording, I don't know when this is going up. We've got a rough idea, but... Um, at the time of recording this game, I am on holiday in three weeks' time. So, maybe we can shotgun it then. Anyway. So, whether this will be, I don't know, a Sunday special or whether I won't start uploading it until it's all done. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway. Without any further bullshit, let's go into it. Yeah, I was playing this yesterday. I got an episode 2 on Inferno and it wasn't bad, you know. But, <laughs> I know... That's just the beginning. So, without any further ado, let's do it. Inferno mode. Does this game still hold up? Well, let's find out, shall we? Let's take a trip down memory lane. Uh, also, save data will be lost. Oh, no. I don't have any coffee, do I? Oh, that's no good. Yes. Test the limits of your sanity. I don't doubt it. I don't doubt it at all. <laughs> I don't know how long these videos are going to be. Uh, 20 minutes, I guess. 30 minutes, I suppose. It depends. It depends how, how my sanity holds up.
94 minutes since Chris and Jessica dropped off the radar. But the interpolation from their last known coordinates puts them right here on this ship. Right, so here we go, the Queen Zenobia. Um, I, I did start using my Xbox controller for this game, uh, but, you know, I can't find a way of making this game feel nice to play anymore. Uh, I suppose that's just like a holdover from it being a uh, 3DS game, I guess. It doesn't feel like Jill actually walks along the floor. Ooh. Yeah, we're right, pal. Uh, it kind of feels like she just floats. She kind of just, you know, um, <laughs> ghostily uh, floating, drifting across the floor. It's it's kind of bizarre. Um, and none of these issues were in Resident Evil uh, Revelations 2, of course, because, you know, that game uh, wasn't built for handhelds. I mean, it was. Just check all of my macros are working here. And of course they're not. There's always one that doesn't work. So we've got grenade down works. So grenade up does not work. Not going to test dropping a frag. Now we're going to have to get used to dodging enemies in this game. Um, I used to be reasonable at that. But that was then. It's been abandoned for a while. Right, okay, so I'm going to have to get my skills back, yes, we might have to dig the corpse of Sega fan up from his grave, slap him round a bit, get some information out of him, but anyway, oh, look at this dude, this dude looks literally like a Resident Evil 1 uh, era zombie, and I'm all about that. Ugh, it smells like rotting flesh. Yeah, kind of looks like. <laughs> rotten flesh as well, Jill. Now, if you're looking for all the handprints, one thing that I do remember is I'm pretty sure one of the handprints is all the way out here. So if you want to get it, you have to come all the way back through the ship to grab it. Uh, what? What's that? Go scan it now. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. But you don't have the Genesis scanner yet. Right. Come on, Parker. Fuckery to, uh, to commit. Oh, there's something here. Don't you worry about that. <gasps> I don't think we're alone. We're not alone, Jill. It'd be kind of a dull, boring game if we were. Now, it's kind of a mixed bag on Inferno from what I've played so far. There appears to be more stuff littered around the environments. Or, not necessarily more stuff, but the item placement in general was different. Doesn't look like just water. Yeah, let's not think about what that looks like, Jill. You've probably seen it in one of those online movies, you know. Okay. Well, this place certainly isn't up to code, I can tell you that much. Ooh, we've got some handgun parts. I don't know if we get better custom parts here. Uh, on Inferno. I'm going to assume we do, because we're going to need something. Let me tell you that much. You can kind of hear enemies. They're around that corner. Now, on normal mode, there are no enemies around this corner. Now, let me put it into this perspective. This rifle that I have here fires three round bursts. On normal, it takes about two of the three rounds to kill an enemy. On this difficulty, well... <laughs> yeah. Right. There's blood coming from the ducks. That's cute. Whoever's crawling around in those vents, could you stop, please? It's arm. I've never seen a mutation like this. Well, no, but you will. Let's grab the machine gun ammo. And remember that there's some more there. So, this machine gun is, is very, very powerful, but it's worthless. This magnum's very, very powerful. Uh, you might be able to take down a standard enemy with a few shots from it. But the rifle, the rifle is where it's at. Hey guys. Now unfortunately, the sheer amount of ammo that it takes to actually get past these guys kind of renders it a bit of a uh, pointless endeavor. Luckily we have a charge mode on this gun. Ow. Thanks dick. Right, let's just, you know, let's just get a little wiggle on, shall we? Let's 
kind of not worth fighting these guys. Ow, thank you. Thank you for your continued support there. Uh, yeah, so, not worth fighting enemies. You just, you just gotta grin and bear it. Just, just, just gotta get through them. Uh, right, that might not be a bad shout, actually. So, uh, we've already seen more enemies <laughs> than the normal difficulty actually has pretty much in it, which is fun. Okay, that works. Now, a lot of these lockers don't have anything in them either, so bear that in mind. Now, we are going to want to switch up to this bad boy. Rack her up, load her up with rounds. Oof. Okay, cool. Oh boy. Now, in the. Yeah, alright, Parker. Keep your damn pants on, for God's sakes. Now, in the normal mode, this is where you encounter your first enemy. And you have a pistol. And it takes uh, about five, six shots, maybe, if you're good and accurate. But this isn't normal. Parker, give me a hand here. I got something. I think it's a gun. Now what? Give me a sec. So, it's not Chris. <laughs> hey, Jimmy. Thank you for this dose of pain you have bestowed, bestowed on me. Oh, God, there's me thinking about... Oh, we're not dead. Well, that's something. Right, we actually do have to kill this guy. Now, Parker's going to do his best, bless him, but he's not much cop. Now, this rifle that we have is kind of a beast. And we want to try and get used to dodging again, but it's... Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting there. I'm kind of getting my skills back, but uh, yeah. There's about as much crust on my skills as there is on this game. Uh, okay, I did. I was hoping it was going to heal us. Right, let's try and dodge this guy. Wait for him to come up. There we go. All right, all right, all right. Those old crusty skills are coming back. All right, yeah. Hey, keep keep dancing with him, Parker. Let me let me put around through his skull. Ooh, yes. Now you want this bolt action boy because she does a lot more damage than the automatics. The automatics have their place. But we're going for pure pain. Ooh. Could have got a hit on him then. I think I still need that achievement. Ooh, right in the skull. He's done. This explains our missing crew. This is not good. Where are you? I have a feeling Chris is probably having a, a better time than us. Maybe. Episode 1, Into the Depths. Aye. Aye. Into the Depths, indeed. This sunny and idyllic Mediterranean coast was the site of one of the world's greatest structures. It took a full 11 years to finish constructing the world's first Aquapolis, the floating city of Terra Grigia. A sustainable metropolis operating on a massive solar energy matrix and equipped with the latest green technologies. 
Never before had solar energy been used to supply power to an entire city. But in 2004, Veltro, a terrorist group opposing the city's development, launched a bioterrorist attack. They not only released a virus, but also several creatures, known as bioorganic weapons, further complicating the situation. This launched one of the worst tragedies the world has ever seen. The FBC, the world's leading counter-bioterror organization operating under the auspices of the U.S., was called in to direct efforts to contain the attack. The BSAA, a counter-bioterror NGO, which operates independently of the interests of any one country, went in as observers to assist the FBC. Realizing the need for immediate and decisive action, Supreme Local Headquarters issued the order to use the city's solar energy matrix on itself. Media outlets around the world began to refer to the incident as the Terra Grigia Panic. Following the incident, the FBC announced it has successfully disbanded the terrorist group called Veltro. It is now 2005, and a sense of calm and security is finally returning to the people. But, as you can see, the lost city of Terra Grigia remains inaccessible, a silent and potent symbol of the threat that bioterror poses for people around the world. You know, considering these cutscenes were originally met, meant for like a three 40p handheld screen. They've done a very respectable job cleaning them up. Ah, there you two are. O'Brien, you don't normally join the faith. Well, my doctor told me I need exercise. <laughs> I assume you both know that the FBC has cordoned off the entire area. However, in the past few weeks, a number of mysterious carcasses have washed up. Ooh. I guess the FBC couldn't cover up a mess this big, huh? Anyone who knows what happened here is going to put two and two together. And that's why I've sent the BSAA in to investigate. Did you pick up your new equipment from Quint? The, uh, Genesis or something. Is that its name? You didn't bother to read the manual, did you? No, uh, I brought it with me, just in case. I hope you read quickly, because you're going to need it on your mission. <laughs> yeah, I'm on it. <laughs> Good man, Parker. Always bring the manual with you. But real men don't need manuals. Or real women in this case so yeah so this is kind of like the rub of this game the genesis device it it's an interesting mechanic it's you know it definitely is more of a gimmick than um oh hello uh thank you didn't actually know that was there <laughs> yeah so it's, it's definitely more of a mechanic uh, more of a gimmick i should say you you can scan things and you can find hidden objects in the environment uh, you can also scan enemies, and uh, it will give you a certain percentage. If that percentage gets to 100%, the game will give you uh, some uh, a herb to heal yourself with, which requires a decent sample size. Which is quite nice. Scan the carcasses on the beach and send me your data. All right. Ah, look at this mess. Oh, they're rotted to hell. Have a look at this. Yeah, not a lot to look at once you scrape it off your boot, is it? Uh, I don't think, uh, like, crows or anything give you anything these uh, in this game anyway. I mean, enemies don't really drop health or stuff, to be fair, unless they're key items. FBC, looks like somebody has already raided the place. Well, delightful. Wasn't me. Um, so we need to scan this bad boy. Another 15%. See that percentage something. at the top? From inside it. From inside it. That's where Terra Grigia was. Uh, a year already? Yep. A year. Mate, try nine for me. There she is, the fallen Aquapolis. So, 
yeah, when that when that meter gets to 100%, we get a free heal, uh, which is quite nice. Uh, this is what I mean by we can find uh, hidden items. Some are useful, some eh, not so useful. Anywho, let's look at this big, massive duffel bag of shit on Don't the floor. Worry. I've done this before. I've got something. It's an engineered mutation. This could prove a link. I'll run some tests on this. Continue with the investigation. Yeah, that that scene kind of I don't know about that man. I mean should be we shouldn't we be wearing like hazard suits or something? Because Jill's just put her hand in this big old duffel bag of mutant shit here. And then she's handed this vial of, well, something to uh, O'Brien here, who's just taken it off our hands with not so much as a glove. Okay. Uh, also, Jill stuck her hand in that big bloody mess that we saw uh, earlier on the Queen Zenobia. But, hey, I mean, I guess she's a big girl. You know, she's got a big girl pants on and she's not worried about it. Any viruses or anything? I guess she hasn't lived through a pandemic, has she? Oh, hello. Now, one thing I will say. On these kind of side hustle missions, uh, the game doesn't seem to feel like that much harder. It's only really, at least that's my experience. I haven't got that far into the game, of course. But you can see this thing isn't exactly that threatening. We need to shoot it in the mouth to do extra damage. There we go, it's dead. So, yeah, um, on these kind of side missions. These must be a cakewalk. I suppose. So why'd you quit the FBC for this outfit? I wanted to be more involved. I wanted to fight. I see you two are okay. Continue with the investigation, but proceed with extreme caution. Yeah, we're okay. Thanks for the help, by the way, hey, Brian. That was pretty good of you. Nice to know our boss has got our back. Oh, if you can tell, that was sarcasm, dick. Um, yeah, so these sections aren't really any harder. They, they are harder, but they're not that much harder. It's the stuff when you're on the ship. At least, as I said, that's my experience so far. We do have a nade, actually, if we want to use it. Oof. Give me a few more. Big badaboom. Must have ruptured from gas. Yeah. We've got some more bullets up there. Nice. We're going to need some more bullets, but we've got grenades as well, so, you know. Look at this place. I really like this beach scene. It's really cool. We don't have many bullets. Now, I don't actually know if I've got all of the handprints. I don't think I do. And on this difficulty, I'm not going to get them because... Fuck that. <laughs> I might do this uh, on an easier difficulty at some point. Just to get all the handprints. But they're essentially hidden collectibles that you can get. Should be a handprint there. But... I guess we've already got that one. So they don't show up if you've already got them. That's kind of interesting. But there's 30 of them to find in the game. We don't have data to run a complete yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm doing it, boss. I'm doing it. Alright. Chill. Calm down. Terra Grigia wasn't fried in a day. Oh. Wait. Never mind. Okay, so we still need a little nugget of uh, goop. Hopefully something's going to burst out. Uh, out. No, nope, I guess we are missing something. We're missing 1% of goop. 
monster goop. Hey Parker, could you uh, at least pretend to do to help me? Ah, there we go. Give me your goop. So this magical wonder device can't transmit samples wirelessly. Oh, okay. It was 2000 and... <gasps> it was like 2020... No, it wasn't. It was 2004, I believe. You can build a massive giant Aquapolis on the city. You can, do, you can build devices that can scan um, humongous blobby mutations and synthesize healing from them. But you can't send data wirelessly. All in a day's work for you two, eh? Yeah. Also, get that sample data to me. It does bug me actually that the crosshair isn't centered with the gun. Anyway, uh, yeah, Brian. Hey, shit, Parker. We've probably just blown our chance. We had a perfect opportunity to uh, negotiate a raise here from our boss. We could have let that monster bite his neck a bit, you know. Bring the samples to me. There you are. Nice work. No doubt about it. These corpses show signs of viral infection. And I bet it's no coincidence they came through the FPC's blockade. Well, we did all we can. Now, we wait for the results to come back from HQ. Huh? It's the emergency line. Yeah, it's me. What? Yes, that's fine. I'll take it from here. We'll have to speed things up. Starting now. Uh-huh. Good. Get to it. Gil, Parker. You two are still on the case. What happened? We lost contact with Chris and Jessica. When? How? We're not certain. I've sent their last known coordinates to your terminals. The signal was lost over the ocean. Thought they were in the mountains chasing Feltro. But judging from their position, they must be... On a ship. I'll go back to HQ. Take charge of the search and rescue. You two will be my eyes out there. Yes, sir. Hmm, I do like that ominous storm swirling around Telgrisia there. Poetic, don't you think? And there we go. Well, I mean, that's like the first bit. Got 5,000 BP, which we can spend in the store. But I don't think you can buy anything for um, single player. Uh, the campaign, I should say. I think it's all for raid mode. Anywho, we are going to drop a save there. We're going to call it a video. Things haven't really heated up much yet, but uh, but they will. They will. <laughs> anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. And as always, until next time.